We come now to the second of the 17 principles which lead to the master key with which you may open the door to the attainment of your definite major purpose in life. Uh, this principle of success is called the master mind principle. I want you to understand the nature of the master mind principle because you must use it before you can take possession of the master key. An understandable definition of the master mind is this. It consists of two or more people who work in perfect harmony for the attainment of a definite purpose. Now, here are some interesting facts about the master mind which uh, give you an idea of how important it is and how necessary that you embrace this principle and make use of it in attaining success in your chosen occupation. First of all, it is the principle through which you may borrow and use the education, the experience, the influence, and perhaps the capital of other people in carrying out your own plans in life. It is the principle through which you can accomplish in one year more than you could accomplish without it in a lifetime if you depended entirely upon your own efforts for success. And I have heard well-informed Bible students say that the first known application of the master mind was that which existed between the Nazarene and his 12 disciples. Of one fact, I am absolutely sure. When you form a true mastermind alliance with others and uh, work with them in a spirit of perfect harmony, you can draw freely upon the spiritual forces within you in uh, carrying out your plans and desires. I also know that the mastermind principle can give you absolute protection against failure, provided always that your purpose is in using this principle is beneficial to all whom you influence. In my research while organizing the science of success, I had the collaboration of practically every outstanding successful man this country has produced during the past 50 years. And I can tell you definitely that their success was due in the main to their knowledge and application of the mastermind principle. I wish also to call your attention to the fact that our great American way of life and our unmatchable system of free enterprise have been built upon the mastermind principle. The greatest document ever conceived by the mind of man is a perfect example of the mastermind principle in action. It is the Declaration of Independence and the best evidence of the importance of maintaining perfect harmony in a mastermind alliance may be found in the fact that the 56 men who signed the Declaration of Independence knew full well that it might turn out to be either a license of freedom for all mankind or a death warrant which would cause each of the signers to be hanged. Now let us see how the mastermind principle has brought success to people whom we all know. First, uh, consider when Kate Smith began her career as a singer. She had difficulty in earning enough from her singing to pay her living expenses. And she perhaps never would have made uh, her singing pay if she had not discovered and applied the mastermind principle which gave her access to the master key to success when she formed a mastermind alliance with Ted Collins. And according to a report I saw in Reader's Digest, Kate Smith has earned upwards of $30 million and she is still in the upper brackets of income. Two, I remember when Edgar Bergen and that cute little block of wood known as Charlie McCarthy used to play anywhere they could get an engagement. And I rather suspect that often all they got for their services was a meal. Uh, but Edgar Bergen is a smart man in the field of entertainment. So he formed a mastermind alliance which introduced him and Charlie to millions of people by radio and television. And uh, I suspect he is not concerned about money any longer. And you may be surprised when I tell you that the great Ford Industrial Empire started with the formation of a mastermind alliance between Henry Ford and his wife. At the beginning of his career, Henry Ford was shy and lacking in self-confidence. It was Mrs. Ford who inspired Henry Ford with the faith and the courage to go ahead with the perfection of his horseless carriage. Although his uh, relatives and uh, neighbors generally tried to discourage him from wasting his time with the contraption, as they called it. Four, the Federation of States, known as the United States of America, is the richest and the most powerful nation civilization has yet produced. And the secret of our strength and riches consists in our form of government through which all our states function in a spirit of harmony based on the mastermind principle through a central federal government located at Washington. And now a word to you personally. 
If you work for a salary or wages, you have a marvelous opportunity to promote yourself into a higher income and a more responsible position by forming a mastermind alliance with your associate workers, including the management. In my next visit, I will give you further instructions on how to apply the mastermind principle so as to increase your own income and promote yourself to a higher position with the full cooperation of your management. Yes, that is correct. I will show you how to write your own price tag, fix your own wages, establish your own working hours, and give yourself financial independence. But right now, I want you to do three things before our next visit. First, decide definitely where you wish to be and what you wish to be doing during the next three years. And second, decide how much money you desire to be making and what you are going to do to earn it. And third, Form a mastermind alliance with at least one person in your immediate family and at least one other person among those to whom you are selling your services. By taking these three steps, you will have gone a long way toward appropriating the great master key to success. There is no such thing as something for nothing. Everything, including your personal success, has a price that must be paid. And the only price you are requested to pay for the present is the effort necessary to do three simple things that I have suggested. Now, before you begin to take the three steps I have suggested, there is one important fact I wish to you to remember, and it is this. Control your mental attitude and make yourself friendly and agreeable with everyone with whom you are closely associated uh, if you expect friendly cooperation in return. Indifference cannot create a mastermind alliance for you. A negative mental attitude can bring you nothing but failure. Remember always, you are where you are and what you are because of your mental attitude in which you relate yourself to other people. Remember also, your mental attitude is the one and the only thing over which you have complete control. Success is something which has to be planned. And success is something which has to be earned in advance. True, there is such a thing as luck, but just remember that luck is something you can create for yourself if you know the rules and follow them just as I give them to you. Remember, too, that success in the higher brackets of achievement is something that can be had only by taking others along with you. And the best definition of success which I know is this. Success is the knowledge with which to get whatever you want from life without violating the rights of others and by helping others to acquire it. Uh, there is a known formula for the attainment of success and it is as definite and certain as are the rules of mathematics or the principles of science. My purpose in these visits is to bring you that formula in simple terms that you can understand and apply. But I can never give you that for which you are not ready. If you are ready to advance into the higher brackets of success, uh, you will recognize this fact by your willingness to follow the simple instructions I shall give you as we go along. If Kate Smith had not been ready for success when she formed a mastermind alliance with Ted Collins, he couldn't have brought her success. Uh, this thing called success is a very profound and interesting thing because the, the line of demarcation between success and failure is so slight that it is often hard to tell where one ends and the other begins. Uh, for example, in my association with the late Henry Ford, I recognize that he had thousands of people working for him who had much more education than he, more magnetic personalities, more ability to make friends, and a much better chance of succeeding than Mr. Ford had when he was working for wages. But Mr. Ford had one simple quality the others who worked for him uh, did not possess. The same quality I will clearly describe for you in my future visits with you. Meanwhile, I would be interested in knowing if you can describe this one simple quality Henry Ford possessed, which made him the greatest industrialist this nation has ever produced. In my next visit, I will give you a definite clue as to the success quality which helped Henry Ford spread his influence throughout the world and make himself richer than Croesus, despite the fact that he had only a meager common school education. Until then, please be of good cheer, will you? And just remember that your only real limitation is the one you accept and set up in your own mind. So, you've just registered for your first MOOC and you're wondering what to do next. There are many ways you can succeed in a MOOC. 
You might just want to follow along and get a sense of the topic. You might be doing it for course credit. You might be doing it to develop a new learning network or to help finish that project you're working on. This video is how I look at success in a massive open online course. Let's say you've just registered for a MOOC about thingamajiggets. You've registered at the course site and you've decided that you're going to commit your time, but you're trying to figure out where to start. This is five steps to succeed in a MOOC. You need to orient, declare, network, cluster, and focus. First, you need to orient yourself. Where are the materials? The links you'll need to use every week. The times of the live sessions? Gather these together. Bookmark them. You'll find that in some ways, a MOOC is a lot like just being on the web, with one big exception. A MOOC is paced. There are readings and topics, and they're separated in the weeks. While no one is going to be checking on you to make sure you read everything, the materials are there, and while you don't need to cover everything, the more you cover, the more you can participate. The next thing you need to do is declare yourself. You need to have a place for your thoughts and your reflections to live. It might be a blog that you write in, it might be a discussion forum that's part of the course. Your MOOC will have some way of gathering all the reflections on your course together. It might be a tag or some other method. Let's say your course tag is thingamajiggets2011. Maybe you already have a blog or you can set one up online. You can write a reaction to one of the readings, add a course tag to it and post it to Twitter. And then probably nothing happens. No one grades it, no one comments. You've declared yourself, but no one seems to have noticed. You need a network. You need to follow some other people reflecting on the material and make some connections. Go back and take a look at the communications you've been getting from the facilitators. Do a search for the course tag. Find some people's work, read a few posts and comment on them. Those connections and your comments are what the course is all about. Better yet, go back to your spot and write a thoughtful reply to someone's questions or concerns. Tell them about it. Make connections. There is a discussion going on, and a discussion is probably what you took this course for. After a few weeks, it's probably time to cluster. During the first couple of weeks, the readings and commenting, you'll notice that there are a couple of other people whose interest in thingamajiggets is very close to yours. You'll find that you're returning to their work more often, that they're commenting on your work more often, that you're connecting. You don't need to connect with everyone. Find yourself a cluster of people who are focused on what you're interested in. A group of people for you to work with. Maybe even a community that might share ideas after the course is over. Finally, and this is especially important to me, you need to focus. Even with all the positive connections and the interesting readings and the learning about thingamajiggets, I always find that a little over halfway through an open course my mind starts to wander. Maybe you're not sure what you're trying to do with the course. If you're not trying to finish the course for credit, why are you trying to do it? Maybe you have an idea about something that you could do with thingamajiggets at work and decided to post your idea on your blog. You can draw in your new cluster to help you with your plan. Start a project, maybe a paper, maybe a grant, and use the rest of the course to finish it. After 10 weeks, you'll know lots more about thingamajiggets. You'll have made some valuable and useful professional connections and have a project that you can apply right back to your work. You'll have succeeded. Orient, declare, network, cluster, and focus. MOOCs are open, and that includes being open to different ways of success. This is my way. Thank you.